Let's talk about normal distributions. This will be an introduction just to get us started, but it's going to be really important to understand the shapes of these things. So if we say that a distribution is normal, what do we mean? Well, if this is some x value that we're measuring, this is the frequency, so how, how often it happens, a normal distribution goes something like, I mean, I'm not very good at drawing them, but it looks something like this. Some people call it a bell curve, especially Americans like to call it that. This right here then will be the average. We're going to call that the mean. So when we say, then, what's the mean? Well, that is this. The mean is going to be this average here, right? This is the average. Maybe I'll remove the word average. I'll just say mean. That's better. So that's the first thing we need, okay? That's the mean. It's called mu. By the way, that's why I have that, uh, look at this. How does one represent the mean of a normal distribution? Get it? It's mu over cat. Now we have this standard deviation. What is that? Well, because we're using the population standard deviation in SL at least, we're going to use sigma. Sigma is going to be the standard deviation. And what is that going to tell us? Maybe I'll write it down. So this right here is the average. This is going to be, you know, how far from the mean. So this tells you something about the spread. Remember, it's the dispersion. So what I mean by this is that um, if the, in this particular drawing right here, if I have it like this, you know about second derivatives, it's where the concavity changes. So when this thing is curving downwards, now it's curving upwards. So halfway between, it's somewhere like here and here. It's where it basically changes. This right here is going to be mu plus 1 sigma. This right here is going to be mu minus 1 sigma. Okay, so this is how, and of course we can go plus 2 sigma if I wanted, and 3, and what, something like that. So this tells you how far from the mean something is. I just want to show you two different examples. Maybe that will be a good idea to show you. So um, what if, for example, we have something that looks like, um, hmm, let me give you something that goes like this. Something like this and like this right here. I think I've shown you this before in another video, but just to try to show you. So same idea, same setup like this right here, and then I'll give you maybe some other one that goes like this right here. They're both normal distributions, and I'm meaning for both of them to have the same mean. Do you notice this right here is still mean? This right here is still the mean, so it's the average value. The difference is the spread of the data. I tried to make the height the same. I don't know if I did, but I meant to. So the idea is that this one right here, however, has, you know, sigma equals small. This has a small standard deviation, which means, you know, the values are quite close to the mean. Whereas this one right here, it's fairly large. I mean, it's relative, but... Let's say this here is a larger standard deviation. So the standard deviation, this sigma, tells us something about the spread of the data. Now, of course, this is symmetric. So in other words, what happens on the left side is the same as to the right. These are symmetric, these normal distributions. They all have this shape here. So let's keep going. Let's go ahead and uh, work on the area under the curve. The key thing here is this feature. The area under the curve is the probability of finding a value there. So. If we take the area under this curve right here, if we tried to find it, your calculator will do it for you. But if we want the area underneath this curve, what do you think it is then from minus infinity to infinity? So in other words, if I said, what is the probability? Um, yeah, actually, let's let's just say this. We'll, we'll say it, um, how could I write? I could say, what's the probability from, I don't know, minus infinity to some x value to positive infinity? What do you think that would be? Hopefully it makes sense that would be just 1, because that would be 100%. In other words, this area would be the entire thing. So if I did the entire area from minus infinity all the way to infinity, you know, the area will be 1. So because of that, the probability of finding something from minus infinity to infinity is 1. I hope that makes sense. Whereas in this example right here, what's the probability of x being greater than 15 if we're told that the mean is 15? I hope that's going to be simple for you. The whole idea is to have these, I want you to have some intuition about this. Well, if the whole thing is 1, then what's the probability of half? Because we're really just asking for what's the, what's the probability of finding it from here and to the right? Well, the area will be exactly half of 1. Does that make sense? The area will be 0.5. Therefore, that will be my probability. So the probability then of x being greater than 15 will also equal 0 0.5. So I hope this makes sense. I'm trying to get you to have some sort of intuition because very often for really complicated looking normal distribution questions, what I do, I just draw it. I sketch what's going on. It really helps me to know what's happening.
Now there's something that you should really memorize. By the way, I like this. A normal distribution, paranormal. You get it? Uh, you should really memorize these numbers here. So this is something. Um, the cent is a normal distribution. The center value right here. Center value is the mean. And then if I go the mean plus one sigma, this is two sigma, this is three sigma. And of course it's the same, so it's minus one sigma, minus two sigma, minus three sigma. Turns out if you take the area, you know, from, let's say we go from uh, here to here. So this area right here. So from, basically I'll tell you this one right here is between uh, plus and minus, uh, well, I'll say this. I'll say it's because um, it's from the mean plus sigma or the mean minus sigma. So I'll say if you're between the mean and plus one sigma and minus one sigma, this area right here is 68%. In other words, this is 0 0.68, if that makes any sense. Now, if I'm going to go uh, with two of them, so from you know two sigma all the way across here to two sigma, because this here was just for one sigma. All right, this is plus or minus one sigma. The one for two sigma, so in other words, from twice the standard deviation backwards and forwards, if I do that, so I'll write it like this, mean plus or minus two standard deviations. This is gonna be the mean plus or minus three standard deviations. This is actually gonna be the piece you're gonna need, this right here. So it helps to sort of memorize these because uh, you could actually be asked for questions uh, that are gonna need this. So this is 0.95, and then this one right here then will be that's the one right there for three sigma. So just to try to make it more clear here, that if you're needing to find out the areas, it turns out you can estimate these. This will be 0.997. So what does this tell you? It tells you that, well, if you want to find out, hey, what percent of the data is found between one sigma back and forth? In other words, from minus one sigma to plus one sigma, 68% of that. In other words, the probability will be 0.68 of finding it between here and here. But if we go to two sigma, it's you know 95 percent, uh, sorry, and the other one is 99.7 percent. So you need to know something about these values. Now this can be useful then because here's an example, and it's actually a fairly tough one. So I've seen one that looks just like this on an exam. I'm trying to give you an example of this is actually a pretty tough one. The part B is at least part A is hopefully okay. So we have the birth weight, the newborn babies, and we're assuming that they're normally distributed. So what does that mean? Again, that means that we can draw ourselves a normal curve, so something like this. And I'll draw myself some sort of normal graph like this, Whee, like that. And I know that uh, X right here, that'll be the, um, let's say it'll be the weight in kilograms. I'll say weight in kilograms. I know my mean, though. The mean is, what is it? It's 3.39, so I know that. So 3.39 kilograms. I know that that's this value right here. This is 3.39, okay? Now the question is, what's the probability that a baby weighs more than 3.39? So I like to just shade what I'm looking for. So here's my 3.39, and I want to find out what's this probability. If you remember what I talked about, the probability is just the area under the curve. Isn't this exactly half? So because of that, then the area will be 0 0.5. Therefore, the probability will also be 0 0.5. There we go. We're done. That was actually fairly easy, right? Next one, however, a little bit tougher. See, what we have to do now is, I think I'm going to just redraw it again, just to make it more clear here. So I'll just redraw it here. So what do I know? I know that here is my normal distribution. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. This right here is 3.39. Now, do I know the standard deviation? I don't. That's actually a problem. But oh well. That's fine, we can still do this. And actually, there's other ways you can do this with a calculator, but I want to show you how you can actually do this particular one intuitively without a calculator. So we want to know, uh, well, we're told that 28.39% of babies have a weight between 3.19 and 3.59. Let me just try to draw what that even is. So somewhere back here, I don't know where it is, but somewhere back here is 3.19. Do you notice it's, this is, uh, you know, the same distance as this is. Like it goes 3.19, you have to add 0.2. Do you see that to get to here? And you add another 0.2, and you end up at 3.59. Now, I don't know if this is exactly the standard deviation. I actually don't know that. What I do know, though, is that this whole area right here, I know that this area right here, though, I didn't draw it very nice, but that area right there I know is 
0 0.2839. That's what I know. From here to here, I know the area under the curve is this. Now the question is, what is the probability that a baby weighs more than 3.59? In other words, this right here is what I want. Do you understand? Like this, I want this. I want this. That's what I'm looking for. So this is all I have. I've only got this information that this area from here to here I know is 0.2839. I want this piece. Do you have any ideas how you could do this? I have an idea. One way to do it is to say, well, let's consider the this piece right here, this right part. Isn't that right there 0 0.5? Now, I want to know this piece to the right. See that I want to know this uh, this piece right over here. I want to know this piece right here. Okay. I'll say I want this. But I know this is 0 0.5. Does it make sense that if I can just figure out what was this piece right here? Is that if I could figure out what this piece was right here? See that I could do 0 0.5 minus that, and that would give me this. That's the sort of the idea. I know this is 0 0.5. I want this piece. But to do that, I need to know this piece. Now, good news, I know what this piece times two is. Does that make sense? So look, I know that this area right here is gonna be 0 0.2839 divided by two. Does that make any sense? Because I knew that, well, from the left to the right, the whole thing was 0 0.2839. So that means this piece to the right here, this little green piece must be half of this. You see, it's only this piece right here, that area. So whatever this area was, 0.2839, I'm going to take that number, and I'm going to divide it by 2. So 0.2839, I'll do divided by 2. I end up with 0 0.14195. 14195. So I hope this makes sense now. So the probability that the weight is greater than 3.59 will be equal to 0 0.5, which was this area minus that area that I just found here, 14195. Let's see what I get. So I'll do it on my calculator. I'll do 0 0.5 minus the answer, and I get 0 0.358, approximately 0 0.358, and I'm done. Wasn't that kind of a clever way to do it? That's because, keep in mind, we didn't know the standard deviation. Now, later in other videos, I'll show you some tricks to how to do it uh, if you're um, in the an analysis SL, at least. We're going to learn some tricks on how to find this, how to do it without the standard deviation like this. But at least this was a way you could do it. It's only special cases, though, where there's symmetry and stuff like that. So this is why I thought this is actually a fairly tough question. Part B is certainly tough. Part A I thought was okay. And that's why we have an introduction here, because it helps to understand something about the symmetries. So in case they tell you, oh, this thing, uh, the probability of finding it from uh, negative, so uh, from uh, mean plus or minus one sigma, well, you'll know that already it's 68%. So you can use that maybe to help you. But in this case right here, we didn't know the sigma, but we did know something about the symmetry, and that's how we could use that. We knew that this thing is the same to the left that it is to the right. So because of that, we can be a little bit clever and go 0.5 minus that piece there, and that was this. I hope that made some sense. But there we go. That's how we work with normal distributions. We're going to have some other videos now where we go ahead and use our calculator to help us to cheat and find all sorts of stuff.